Hello friends, my name is Theo, and today in this exciting Mies Near Media tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at creating a cool double exposure type effect inside of Fusion. You've probably seen this in all sorts of music videos, it was in that Taylor Swift style video. They did a really good job, we're going to make something that looks sort of like that, but probably just not as good. But the same technique applies, I'm sure. So, inside Fusion, we've got this clip of Evelyn on a green screen. You don't need to use a green screen for this. You can rotoscope if you want. I think that's also cool. I'm just too lazy to do it. And, you know, we've got these little wispy strands of hair that I just don't want to deal with. So, the first thing that we're going to do, funnily enough, is take a key. So, I have a tutorial on keying, but we're just going to go through this real quick and add in a clean plate, first of all. And in the clean plate, we're going to select the color that we want. Bring this up in our viewer. You can see that it's selected all of the green because we have not the worst green screen ever. Not the best, but Fusion is really good at keying stuff. Now we'll erode this away a nice healthy bit and then hit fill. And now we've got stuff that's looking pretty good. So I've got our clean plate looking good. Now we'll add in a delta keyer, which is awesome. I love the delta keyer. And we'll pipe our media in here. And we will right click and drag into here and make this the clean plate because clean plate, you know. And if we bring this up in our view, you can see right away we've got a really a very acceptable key without doing any work, which is really nice. The only thing we need to deal with is there is this light in the shot that we do not want to be in the final shot. So we will quick add a little polygon mask. And by default, this goes into the effect mask input which we don't want but it's pretty easy to change that into the garbage mat input so we're just masking this out you can do as good or bad of a job as you want with that and i'm clearly just not doing a great job so you see right now it's going into our effect mask which we don't want so we will bring this into our garbage mat by right clicking and dragging select garbage mat and there we go now we've got our key and during the whole shot evelyn doesn't ever cross that light I made sure of that because I didn't want to do any rotoscoping like we've been over before. So now one more thing we're going to do is I'm just going to hit Alt on one of these guys and that creates a router node. And this will just help clean up our little graph. And now we are looking good, rocking and rolling. So to keep everything clean, we will select all of these nodes and then either hit Control G or right click and go to group and then that neatens them up they're all still there if you want to see them in case you want to impress anyone we'll call this key and we'll just move it over here and i'll do a quick little save now the next part is where things start to get exciting and that is overlaying the footage that we're going to put over evelyn so we'll grab some footage i've got this footage of some clouds and bring this up in the viewer shuttle around And you can see the first thing we need to deal with is that our clouds are much higher resolution than our output. So we need to resize this down. And your first instinct might be to go for the transform tool, but if you're trying to get really exact on it, that transform tool can get a little bit annoying. You have to do math. So we'll just use a resize node. Now you can see automatically drops it down to the correct size. So use timeline settings, but automatically we're good to go. And we'll change this filter method to cubic just because we're jerks. It doesn't really make that much of a difference, especially in a shot like this. But linear is just not good enough for us here at Meester Media. All right, now we will merge these two together by using a da -da -da -da, merge node. Imagine that. So shift drag this in line and bring our resize up here. Now you can see, great, we've got our clouds in our foreground and we assume that Evelyn's still in the background. So how are we going to cut these two out? Well, we can just bring our key and use that as our effect mask. And look at this. We've got a silhouette of Evelyn that is cutting out these clouds. We're done, right? No. We can make this even better a couple different ways. The first thing that we're going to do is change our apply mode from normal to hard light. And you can play around with those to see whatever you like best. But you can see we're getting these weird areas around the dark parts of stuff, which we don't want. So we can fix that pretty easily just by going to Curves and lightening up the shadows some in our clouds. And now we get this really cool look. At least I think it's cool where we got the clouds overlaid. You can still see Evelyn on there. It's not quite just an opacity thing. 
But the Taylor Swift video, they did another really cool thing, which I liked a lot. I was using a displacement effect along with this uh, silhouette. So we'll use our Evelyn to displace from. You can see right away things bump a little bit, but can't really see what's going on. Change this from radial to XY, which will make it a little bit more fun for us. And just so you can see what's going on, I'm going to change our light power all the way up. And now you can see that it's going to be warping our clouds around the edges of the image. So we'll change these both to Luma because that's totally fine. You can play around and see what works best for you. The X offset and the X refraction. And you can see, if you look over here, that moves it based on the luminance of the image. So as she moves, the clouds will sort of warp around with her, which will give a very cool effect. And we'll bring our light power down to something more reasonable, like that. And I'll bring the spread up, which will sort of soften out those edges. And I'll bring these up just a little bit more, just for fun. But now, we are rocking and rolling. Looking good. So we can play around with blend modes a little bit more. Maybe change this from hard light to overlay. Or I think hard light is the best looking one here. What did screen look like? Screen might be okay too. I might like screen. So we'll actually make this darker then. Yeah, I think screen's a little bit cooler. But let's say that we want a little bit more detail in Evelyn's face. We can do that by adding a bitmap in line with our key here, and then add an ellipse to that, which we actually want to be going into the effect mask. Now we can set our bitmap to Subtract, and we can invert this, and we can invert our ellipse also, and soften out the edge, and transform it around a bit. So now we get this extra cool look, and we can of course keyframe this a little bit, or you could track it if you were really you know, feeling gung-ho about stuff, but I'm not. So we'll go there. I'll just match it to the tip of her nose. Just a little bit. And that's looking pretty cool. I might even turn this displace up a little bit more. Since now we're not affecting her face as much. So now we've got this really cool look going on. And you can add whatever background you want behind it. So normally this will just be like a white background or something. So add another merge node, add a background, drop this into the merge, and hit Control T on the merge to flip the background and foreground. And we'll make this a gradient and make it, yeah, linear is cool. We still need to fix this garbage mat a little bit, it looks like. Make this a lighter color. Back to our polygon. And expand it out. Now that's looking better. Anyway, we'll call that good. I think it turned out pretty neat. Could be better, could be worse. But that's what you get when you record tutorials. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial. If you liked, leave a like. If you didn't, give it a dislike. No matter what, leave your feelings down in the comments below. If you want to see more cool videos like this, be sure to subscribe to the Misty Media YouTube channel. If you want even more goodness, check out MistyMedia.com slash products. Where we've got all sorts of stuff to make your stuff better, faster, easier, etc. Stuff that'll make you make more money, which is good. Also, be sure to share this video with your friends so that they know how to make cool effects for their music videos that may or may not be a little bit dated, but are fun to do anyway. So once again, I'm Anthea with Meesner Media. Hope you have a great day, and I will see you next time. Bye.